Okay, super. Henry, what you got? Um, just the relative functionality question. Yes. Um, so using radian, yes. Coding, uh, and you've sized, and you've, you've put in enough length of bytes to read the code. Mm -hmm. How uh, how does this energy analysis account for using less? Uh, I mean, less. You're using putting less load on your air system. Yeah. And instead, the like using this. Capturing what decision intensity is and sure. the, uh, No, let's talk about that. It's a really good question. At a high level, whether you do it through the energy settings, you do it through the space settings, either way it'll sort of work. You'll see there is this notion of really what is this sort of a system that's primarily being used for the system. Whether it's a VAV system or a central heating radiant floor. These are all different sort of systems that could possibly be in there, or central heating, where a central heat source is providing radiators. You know, they're all sort of different sort of choices along the way. What happens is each of these things really just gets computed back to an efficiency factor, okay, for those different systems. So independent of the system you apply, just based on the thermal properties and the loads, there's going to be a certain amount of heat that's either flowing in or flowing out. So what it does is based on your choice here, it's not like it does a detailed model of the whole system and really is modeling the ins and outs of the flows. You know, that's what like uh, you take Peter's class and you really go through and do the spreadsheets to get all the detail of the heat flows in and out. You know, you get into more of that. This is just really at a high level saying, given the overall heating and cooling loads and these efficiencies, it estimates the amount of energy that's going to be used based on that. Okay, but as a starting point, yeah, if we're going to have a radiant system, the first thing we should do is let's just go ahead and change it to central heating on a radiant floor. Because that'll then, the heating and cooling load will be the same, okay, but the energy that it's going to project we're going to use will be different. So. I would expect that with central heating radiant floor, okay, if I ran that, I would get a lower energy use intensity. Okay. Now, the choices you make here in the energy settings also, though, affect the HVAC calculations because if you come over here and you say building service there, it's, it's using that same assumption. So if you could choose it one, choose it in either of the dialogues. It'll sort of work. The big things are, yeah, after you get the building construction down right, make sure that building service is adapted to what you have in mind. You know, because, you know, we, and we can do that um, either as an overall thing or, let me save those. Right now, the overall space would be central radiators. But if I wanted to say that in a specific space, for example, maybe in this hallway space, there was a different type of construction over there. So here, conditioning type, it's heating and cooled space type. So building Oh, you know where it is? It's not actually in the space. It's in the zones. We're gone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember it actually lives in the zones instead. So if I come back over to uh, analyze, and I say those heating and cooling loads, OK? and I go to the details, you can sort of get zone by zone. And then within here, there is, oh, where are they going to find it? Space type, construction type, people, lighting. Where did it go? It's not the analytical surfaces. I swear it's in the zones. Oh, it's, hang on, I'm looking at a space. I haven't zoned these yet. I can go through and change, you know, whatever I have in mind you know, whether it's split systems or VAVs or whatever I have in mind. Okay, so again, when I run that, that should then, I think the loads will still be the same. Well, yes, it's just gonna be the efficiency of how much energy it's gonna to take to do that. Although it'd be interesting, I don't think it actually fit changes the numbers that come out of this. Because out of this, when you say calculate, You come up with a number, there's sort of a peak cooling load and a peak heating load, okay, 206 and 325. 
based on those, we're going to have to go through and size our system. Okay, and whether, if it's all being provided by a single unit, that would be the total number. But it gives you a zone by zone and a room by room summary. So if you instead were going to say just the Northwest room, you see, if I was going to individually control that, I'd need 67, 8, and 42, 7 in terms of heating and cooling just for that room. So if I was going to come up with a split system in there, I would go through and make sure that uh, you know, the cooling capacity of it could be 67, 8 or the heating capacity. But if you do a like, split system for the uh, cooling, we only care about that. The heating is going to be taken care of by the floor. Even if it's in a, so, so that ramp up or because it's low, should you still have ramp up or something? Again? Or maybe, uh, so you said in this ramp up time mm -hmm. before your oh, yes, yes. water gets in. Yeah. So would you say maybe somewhere in the yeah. top of that? Or? Oh, no, exactly. Then you could, if, if you're just using it as a supplemental system to top it off, yeah. Yeah, the biggest thing is you got to provide that much cooling, so, and we need that much heating total. You can sort of say that some of that heating is going to be provided through your air system, and some of it's going to be provided through your radiant system. Okay, so, yeah, it's actually pretty good in terms of how this all works. So, go through and for your buildings in the limited space that you're going to go through and do it, put the ducts, put the pipes, put whatever you're in in there. Really make sure that you're very careful about the thermal properties. And then go through and we're going to run this calculator and figure out just how big the system needs to be. Okay, room by room or zone by zone. Okay, and then we can sort of tweak it so that it has the right kind of control system for each of the zones. Okay, so sort of makes sense? I think it'll make more sense after you start, start diving into it and doing it yourself. So in our last few minutes, let me just start to introduce the Next sort of topic that we're going to get into, just as a way of introduction, but I'll go ahead and bring up a simple little model just to sort of give you a sense of where we're going. You saw that for the radiant systems, we're able to go through and model piping, and we're going to do the same thing for plumbing, and I have a lot of examples and resources out here. We'll go through some of those next time. But let me go through and I'll just give you a really high level example of what we're going to be up to. The idea is that like all those air terminals that had to be connected together, we also have all these plumbing fixtures that have to be connected together. And they have their own loads on them. They have a certain amount of supply that needs to be coming to them. They have a certain amount of waste that tends to come away from them. We're going to think a lot about how to connect them and how to even connect them together in interesting ways. But at some level, they typically have hot and cold water coming to them. Okay, and they'll, um, that hot and cold, or the hot water almost always is clear hot water, kind of domestic hot water. Cold water, depending upon the individual type of unit and our overall strategy, could be fresh water that's coming uh, in the domestic system, or it could be gray water that we're recycling from the roof or recycling from the lavatories or something like that. So we're gonna start connecting systems that way. On the sanitary side, we're gonna typically carry things away, okay? And we might go through and carry them away to the sewer, or in the case of a gray water system, we might be carrying away some of that to a holding tank or a recycling tank where we can reclaim the water and kind of use it again uh, from the laboratory water or the relatively clean gray water sources to go through and flush the toilets and urinals. But what we're going to do is basically go through and put together a very similar sort of system where for all these different units out here, we're basically just run pipes to connect them all together. So at a high level, even in preparation for that, it really starts with just getting the fixtures in the right place, being able to work with them, and then we sort of run pipes out of them. But it's actually pretty straightforward about how we do it. It always gets down to this issue of, will the geometry fit for the type of connections you have in there? Okay. But let me go to the floor plan and just take a look at it overall. We'll often have a restroom that looks something like that. That's sort of based on that design where 
We have a large kind of ADA compliance stall at the end, and we have a series of other stalls, either toilets or toilets and urinals and sinks. So that's kind of a very standard sort of arrangement. But how it's going to work is very similar in some ways to the way we've connected uh, even the plumbing systems together, we are the ductwork systems together. If I imagine that this space over here is a mechanical room, okay, what we're going to do is basically run the main branch pipes, kind of like we ran the main ducts, okay, back towards the point where it's all going to get collected, and then we're going to connect everything into it. Now let's talk about that. Just at a high level, Revit is really good at connecting things into main lines, but it's not so good if you just said, go ahead and connect that toilet to something way across the you know, building, it might not do the best job of routing things. So it's definitely worthwhile to go through and using your intelligence, sort of figure out where you think the main trunks are gonna be, the main lines are gonna supply it, then connect things into it. Okay, and then it does a fairly easy job of uh, kind of making it happen. And let me just give you a really quick example of that. So for example, oh, I know that all these fixtures over here, I know that the toilets, I know the urinal, the sinks, all those are gonna have some sort of cold water coming to them. Although we could later split it off into some other sort of system. So here's how we typically do it. Actually, even there, they're already connected. Let me just open this. I'm going to open up to the start. Do your thing, do your thing, do your thing. Take care. Okay, so in this view, if I go to, for example, the level one plumbing plan, you'll see that what we're gonna do is fairly straightforward. If I'm gonna run some cold water pipes, kind of like I was running those radiant pipes, what I'm gonna do is come on over. I'm gonna say, let's go out and get some systems. We're gonna get a piping system. You get to choose sort of the size of the system in this, and the type it's going to be. I'm gonna let it be sort of a cold water supply, domestic cold water. I'm gonna let it be, oh, maybe an inch pipe. It's gonna depend on really all the stuff that's flowing off that pipe. So if I need to go through and have many different fixtures supplied, I might need a bigger pipe that'll be able to kind of like handle the load of all the individual units. Again, uh, right in here, let's say it's an inch. Okay, I'm gonna say some height above the level. So for right now, I'm just gonna assume that I'm gonna run them, oh, high around five feet or something like that. Um, we're gonna find out that hot and cold water pipes are pretty easy to run since they're pressurized. I can sort of put them wherever I want to and keep them out of the way. Sanitary pipes are much harder because since everything has to flow downhill and we don't want any blockages, okay, we have to be very precise about how they're located and make sure that the elevations are good. But I'm just gonna put it at about five feet off the floor for right now. You'll see what I'm gonna do is just from this end, back through all these different supplies. I'm going to go through and just put a pipe in there. Okay, that's my little cold water pipe. Let me go through and look at it in 3D for the plumbing. Okay, there's my little pipe kind of hanging around in there. If I want to go through and start connecting it to things to it, what I can do is I'm going to start by just capping the open ends. The reason I do that is if the ends are open, it'll try to connect to the ends first, as opposed to making a break in the pipe. So I'm going to say cap the open ends. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see what's going on there. 
But what I'm going to then do is choose each of these different units. I'm going to say connect into. And then it's going to say which side do you want to connect in, the cold water or the sanitary side? I'm going to say let's do the cold water. And I'll connect it to that pipe. Now why is it complaining at me about that? It couldn't find the cap either. I'm wondering if in this unit, the one that I opened, am I not in the mechanical template? Because it should, that should, the fact that it didn't have a cap and that it's not uh, able to do that, start ready to add pipes. I think that's where it was. Well, let's go to the cold water fixtures connected. You'll sort of see. That surprises me. But what you're going to do is basically just run that pipe. You're going to connect into, maybe I'll unconnect one and reconnect it in there. So what you're going to find at a high level is that your task is just really figuring out where the main branches are going to be and then just hanging things off of it. As you run the pipes, you're going to find that it can be fidgety like a lot of things in terms of all the connections. So if you have like multiple levels of restrooms or fixtures that are on top of each other, your work gets a lot easier because you can just copy and paste your work from one level up to another level. So let me zoom in on here. I know this one has all the parts that are necessary and just kind of reconnect something. So I'll take out some of this. But the way it basically works now is, I like ducks. And just get that little connection on the end. There we go. I'll reconnect that there. Okay, super. It's a long-winded demo of just trying to show you that what you're going to do is take that guy over there, you're going to say connect into, You're going to choose the pipe you want to connect it into. Okay, and it'll go through and just route them for you automatically. So it's not too bad if you're working in the right template. Same sort of thing on the sanitary side. If I'm going to go through and take that toilet and I'm going to connect it into the sanitary system, I just choose that. And provided the template has all the parts available, it does most of what you need. Okay, so the big thing is, A, getting the main pipes running about the way you want to and make sure they're running downhill if they need to for sanitary or not. B, once we do that, we're gonna go through and it's all gonna come down to how much room you have and if you have room to go through and connect everything all together. Okay. So even here between the two different uh, bathrooms, I'm allowing a little bit of a interstitial wall, like a wall that I can run some pipes in between, okay, which will give me a little more room to run all the pipes as opposed to trying to cram in the wall. But we'll play with this next time. So just as you're thinking ahead, if you haven't thought about your restrooms and where they are for quite a while, go ahead and put a couple toilets and sinks in there. You know, hopefully you have plenty of room for all that. And we'll start thinking about how we start uh, tying all these together into systems. Hey, beauty, let us adjourn for today.